Sharks swimming in the streets, houses and cars floating away, Hurricane Ian wreaked havoc in Naples and Fort Myers with scenes of unimaginable damage. Winds soared to nearly 150 miles per hour with storm surge as high as 18 feet. Ian is now a tropical storm still raging across Florida and dumping as much as 30 inches of rain in some areas. More than 2 million people, 2.5 million people, are without power. Dale Hurd has the story. It's one of the strongest hurricanes to ever hit the American mainland, trapping victims in flooded homes amid rising floodwaters. Many who refused to evacuate probably wished they had. The Category 4 hurricane with 155 mile per hour top winds made landfall in Charlotte Harbor south of Tampa, sending a storm surge of 12 to 18 feet through the cities of Fort Myers and Naples. Sharks were seen swimming in the streets. This door in Naples was blown in from the water pressure, and half the streets in that city are impassable. Large boats were pushed around like toys. Four of them. One house was seen floating away. That house halfway underwater. There goes my car floating away. The storm dumped as much as a foot of rain on some cities as it barreled across the Florida peninsula. Are you guys okay? The first floor of this Naples fire station was inundated under more than three feet of water as firefighters worked to salvage equipment. Ian will be remembered as one of the worst storms to ever hit the state of Florida, knocking out power to at least two and a half million people. But just understand uh, that number is going to grow. You're going to see more power outages as this storm moves through the center part of our state and before it exits into the Atlantic uh, Atlantic coast. 42,000 linemen were already in place to restore power in 30 different areas across the state. Rescue teams and state officials are fanning out to help victims and begin assessing damage. Operation Blessing has already begun assisting in the emergency from their base in Ocala. We're preparing by uh, putting together some pallets of buckets for cleaning. We have plenty of pallets of water also for distribution. And then we have pallets of tarps, all those included in the trucks that we'll be sending out. We have plenty of chainsaws and plenty of people who know how to operate those chainsaws. So in the case that we need to do any downed trees, anything of that nature, uh, we're prepared to help. Now a tropical storm, Ian has moved into the Atlantic and is expected to make landfall again in Georgia or South Carolina this weekend, bringing heavy winds, rain, and a storm surge. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, CBN's Brody Carter joins us now from Orlando. So Bro Brody, tell us what's happening on the ground right now. Well, that Category 4 storm that was expected to hit in the Tampa region actually hit 90 miles south near uh, an area in Lee County. It's called Cayo Costa. Now, this is unconfirmed, Gordon, but media outlets are reporting that the sheriff there is estimating the death toll to be in the hundreds with thousands of people still in need of being rescued. Now, I am here in Orlando, just about five miles away from uh, Orlando, Florida's uh, Walt Disney World. And uh, right now, the winds are definitely picking up as the former eye of the hurricane, now a tropical storm passing through this area, and it's starting to oscillate once again, coming back in waves, which makes me believe the worst came through last night for the city of Orlando. Still dealing with that heavy wind and rain, um, getting a lot of advisories for uh, potential flooding threats that are coming through the area. And as this passes by, we're just really thankful that right now we still have power because we know there are thousands of people sitting through this, waiting for this to pass in the dark. Uh, some of the other dangers that we have been warning about coming to fruition and also uh, threatening uh, the area. I just got a notification on my phone telling me that there is a potential for flash flooding. Last night there were tornado tornado, um, not warnings, but rather threats that could be potential to come to fruition. All the meanwhile, trying to fall asleep to the howling wind of a hurricane that's passing through this area so strong that as it pressed in the sheer force of uh, those winds actually kind of moving the building itself. So uh, it breaks your heart when you hear what the sheriff was saying and you're seeing the footage coming out of southwestern Florida to understanding what they had to endure, what they had to go through. Uh, so pressing forward, uh, we understand 
understand this tropical storm can produce 73 mile an hour winds, but that's not the main concern, Gordon. Right now, it is actually the flooding that we will have to be waiting for. Well, you talked with a local pastor about what comes next. What, what, what did he tell you? Yeah, there is a local pastor who is, uh, he was sitting in the dark last night when we were talking power outages uh, throughout the Orlando area, worried about going to his hometown in the southwestern section of Florida to see what he's going to come home to. A lot of people here at the hotel feeling the same way. His mother didn't make it out. She didn't evacuate because of that 90 mile difference of where that hurricane was going to land. So she had to hunker down and endure the breadth of the storm. He lost communication with her all the while, despite that anxiety. He's still prepping to have Sunday service for the people here in Orlando. And uh, just finishing that sentiment with me, telling us despite the storm, despite a physical or spiritual storm, we can get through this together. All right. Well, thanks for the report, Brody. And again, please stay safe. The storm is not done. Uh, and if you're in Georgia and South Carolina, our prayers are with you. Please be aware of that storm surge. Uh, if, if your local authorities are saying you need to leave any kind of waterfront property, uh, please listen to them. You don't want to be in, in any kind of storm surge as this thing comes ashore again. If you want to be of help to those in need, there's a very easy way you can do it. You can pick up the phone and call us, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. Uh, we're staging out of Ocala, and we'll, as soon as this storm leaves Florida, uh, we'll be um, deploying those teams uh, and that necessary disaster relief. You can be a part of it. Call us or you can go to CBN.com or you can text the letters OBDR to 71777. In other news, Republican senators are demanding answers from the FBI about the arrest at gunpoint of a pro-life activist. Charlie Nairon has that story and more from the CBN newsroom. Charlie? That's right, Gordon. The agency sending at least 20 agents armed with rifles to the home of Mark Houck last Friday, taking him away in front of his family. The case stemmed from a minor altercation Houck had with a volunteer at a Planned Parenthood abortion clinic in Philadelphia last October. The case never went to court, but the Justice Department came after Houck last Friday. And last night on Fox's Tucker Carlson program, Houck's wife, Ryan Marie, talked about the impact of the FBI assault on her children. The older ones, you, we can talk, we can cry. Um, we've, you know, we've had some counseling. Uh, we have more counseling to do. Um, and the little ones, uh, they're scared. They're scared. There's a lot of crying and a lot of, um, a lot of unrestful sleep. Uh, a lot of kids in our bed at night and in the morning. Hauk entered a not guilty plea to the federal charge earlier this week. The FBI denies it used excessive force, but Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz called the raid absurd, and other Republicans are asking for more information about the FBI's actions. Well, a nationwide moment of prayer Wednesday. Students gathered around their school's flagpoles to call on God. The national initiative called to see you at the poll encourages students from elementary school to college to pray for one another and for the world. This year's theme is a flame, motivating students to be on fire for Christ. And some did just that through praise and worship. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing great. Are you Thousands more gathered to lift up their friends, their schools, country, and the world. The initiative is part of the Global Student Week of Prayer, hoping to inspire unity in Christ and something we all need at this time, Gordon. And we all do need to pray. Here's a, um, a scripture for you. It's from Luke chapter 18. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Let me underline that. We should always ought to pray and not lose heart. We always ought to pray and not lose heart. This morning I was thinking about Elijah, and here he is in Israel. Israel is turned away from God. The king and the queen are against him. They are slaughtering the people the priests. 
Uh, they are changing the sacrifices. They're changing the temple worship. They're starting to worship foreign gods. Well, what does Elijah do? Well, he prays. He doesn't go off and try to raise an army to fight them. He doesn't say, well, let's form another political party. He doesn't do anything like that. He says, let's pray and let's ask God. Isn't that wonderful? And then God answered his prayer, did so very dramatically, a real contrast to the priests of Baal and, and what Elijah, the prophet of God, was able to do, what God did to answer his prayer, to break the family, to bring Israel back to God and bring the blessings of God upon that nation again. We can have that here in America. Men ought to always pray and not lose heart. Today, it's easy to lose heart, isn't it? You know, whether you're talking about the pandemic, all the different wars, all the threats of wars, all the terrorism, the political divide in our country, all of these things. Well, it's a sign for us. We need God right now, and we need to pray for our nation. So let's do that. Join with us. We're going to pray right now. Lord God Almighty, we come to you. And Lord, we don't see the way forward, but we see you. And we know that in you, there is a way forward. That you are able to turn our hearts. You're able to unite us again. You're, you're able for us to love one another again. To seek you with all of our hearts. So Lord God, we turn to you. We turn away from all the things that we've been pursuing, and we pursue you. We seek your kingdom, your dominion, and your righteousness. Lord, unite us together as a people. Let us be one nation under God, indivisible. Give us this, Lord God, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to join with us, we're praying for our country for 40 days, and we need you to join with us. So call us, 1-800-700-7000. Say, you can count on me. I want to pray for America. You can also go to PrayForAmerica.com and, and let us know on, online. When you do, we'll send you a prayer flag and a Pray for America bumper sticker so you can have your neighbors and your friends and Anyone following you on the road know that you're praying for America. So if you'd like that, call us, 1-800-700-7000, or go to PrayForAmerica.com. Terry? What if your organs could be replaced by a 3D printer? Your aging cells could be reprogrammed to be young again, and your DNA could be rewritten for a disease-free future. Not only would you live longer, you'd also live younger. Dr. Michael Roizen is the Emeritus Chief Wellness Officer at the Cleveland Clinic. He's also well known for his partnership with Dr. Oz through co-authored books and TV. Having done vast research on the aging process, Dr. Roizen believes that in 10 years, life expectancy could jump as much as 30 years. In his latest book, The Great Age Reboot, Roizen says science is cracking the longevity code and age 90 could be the new 40. Well, we welcome back to the 700 Club. Dr. Roizen, it's wonderful to have you back with us again. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you, Terry. You say that by 2030, 2025, 2030? 2030, that, 10 years from now. Uh, wow, that there will be an exponential increase in longevity, that 90 could be the new 40. 40. So oh. what's happened is since about 1870, we've increased longevity by about two and a half years every 10 years. Wow. Initially due to childhood diseases and sanitation, now due to management of things, chronic diseases mm -hmm. like blood pressure and heart disease and diabetes. But in the next 10 years, the science is going exponential enough that we're likely to get a 30-year jump. What is exponential? Well, if you take 30 linear steps, you get 30 yards closer to your target. 
30 exponential steps, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, wow. 32, wow. means you're 26 times around the Earth in 30 exponential steps. And literally, that's how fast the science is going in each of these 14 areas. So there are 14 areas of research into the basic mechanism of aging, and we're learning a lot. So the key point is you want to be prepared for it in both your bank account and your body. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about some things we can do to help that, but, but talk about the 3D printer because that's quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, so imagine you could 3D print yeah. your organs. So take, take it when you get your genes and get a structure of you, if you will, and then say, okay, I want to print a new liver. I need a yeah. new liver. Well, liver is a pretty complex organ. It's got arteries, it's got veins, it's got bile ducts. Unbelievable. It synthesizes proteins, it excretes, and it metabolizes. And so they had a contest. This is at uh, Wake Forest and across the country. And Team Winston actually printed a human Seriously. liver, functional human liver last wow. year. So it was a group of, if you will, students from um, undergraduate, biomedical students, medical students, wow. a whole team, and they printed a, a... So we know you can print jaws and tracheas even, um, but now maybe wow. complex organs. Wow. Well, you always... And that's only one of the 14 areas. Yeah. You know, so there, there literally are 14 different areas into aging mechanisms. You always bring interesting things with you. Let's talk about this creatine. Right, so it? when we have a scientific advisory board that helps keep things updated mm -hmm. on our website, et cetera, and when we were looking at supplements, um, someone suggested, and anyone can suggest on the website for us to look at things, that we look at creatine. And when you did it, it we said, well, it's a bodybuilding. It's yes, for muscles. That's what when, I think of it as. You know, for 15 to 35 year old yeah. people to, <laughs> to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> uses it, and even some football players. But when you looked at the data, it's been studied in people over the age of 70, two randomized controlled trials that showed that this prevents frailty. It prevents really? you from losing muscle mass as you get older. So if you're exercising, it's actually a. Um, kind of boosts what it, you're doing. It, yeah. it, it's synergistic. It, it, it's more than just an additive for yes. exercise helps. Um, this helps, and the two together are more than one and one. And not only that, they looked at side effects of it, because you're worried about side effects in the elderly. And so they're looking at the brain, and instead of inhibiting brain function, it actually decreased the risk of dementia wow. over wow, the that's uh, period. So it, it's a good thing for your muscles and good for your brain. So you put this in a in you liquid put it in or a shake so of some kind? My first, uh, the first time, I, I have a time-restricted eating. I eat from 11 to 7 every ah. day. And so the first food I have is... Um, a teaspoon of this and a cup of coffee. And does um, your coffee I, I, taste the same? The, the coffee doesn't taste different, and really? it actually, uh, that's how I get it every day. There you go, coffee drinkers. Speaking so, of coffee. So coffee is actually a good thing, yes, too. Yes, I rejoiced in your book when I read yeah. that. I underlined so, it. <laughs> so it, it, it not only um, looks like it decreases cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm decreases um, a bunch of cancers, 11 different cancers, wow. um, and uh, decreases dementia and Parkinson's disease. That and, and some of these other things that you have here, the garlic, the this is an onion, you've got some rosemary, all, all these do the same thing? Yeah. Don't you love the so, smell? Oh, so this is rosemary, awesome. but the key is four smells a day. We learned how important smell was in COVID, um, but it turns out four smells a day actually decreases dementia, too. Really? In animal models. Now, we think it does it in humans. The studies are early. But if you don't want to do it that way, you can just get one of these smell packs. And, um, no way. The, the great thing is if I can undo it. I've got nails. Can I help Good. You? <laughs> That's right. So, um, oh, I see. And, and under that is this little oh, my thing. Word. So you just push it. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that smells lavendery. Um, but in any case, whatever you want to do, 
to get four smells a day. So I love the smell of coffee and I love the smell of rosemary, onions, onions garlic. I love garlic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, That's wonderful. If, but if you don't want to chop them, you can use artificial. So, smells. what you talked about with the coffee is basically what all of these things do as far as. Well, no, it's separate. No, oh, it it's is. the coffee is in addition to the smell of coffee, but the coffee has its polyphenol, so it works. The, the, the black stuff in the mm -hmm. coffee or in tea um, work in, on your cell, on the basic cell structure to improve brain functioning. So all of these things today are, we're talking about are brain functioning. Why? Because when you get the reboot, you mm -hmm. want all your organs to be as functional as possible. You know, it may be by 2050, you may go in a car wash at 90 at one end <laughs> and come out 50 at the other end. But for now, it's, or <laughs> but for now it's organ by organ. Uh -huh. And the most important organ is, in fact, uh, your, brain, your brain, I think. Yes, I agree. And you've got a cuff here, a, a blood pressure cuff. Right. You can put it on, uh, I can put it on your... Uh, I didn't take my... So, my meds this morning. <laughs> well, we won't, we won't measure Good. your blood Thank pressure, you. <laughs> but, but it's so simple. Yes, and what you important. want is the, is the key things for um, your cardio... Mm -hmm. i got to turn it off somehow. <laughs> the key things for your cardiovascular system are knowing your blood pressure, knowing your LDL cholesterol, knowing your glucose level, your body mass mm -hmm. index, not having secondhand smoke and then right. managing stress. Right. But those six things are so key. So one of the things, our blood pressure goes up as we age, um, naturally, if you will, and it's mm -hmm. important to, it, it's Traffic. easy, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. as you said, there, there are over 150 approved drugs for blood pressure, so whatever it is to get it normal Do is key. Do something to right. make a difference. Now, we've been hearing about the value of olive oil for years, right. but talk to us about that. So this is extra virgin olive oil, mm -hmm. and again, it's the colored substances in it um, have some benefit for the basic mechanism of aging. So what that is, is the, the date is pretty interesting. A tablespoon and a half a day, whether you use it for cooking or on um, Salad, whole grain or bread or whatever, or, or even just eating it that way. <laughs> um, whatever way you want, it also decreases brain aging or awesome. helps your... Now, no one, we need NIH to do studies of looking at all the things mm -hmm. together, but each of these individually. Same thing with blueberries. Yeah. So, so rich in goodness. <laughs> yes. So um, it is uh, a, a ounce of blueberries a day um, keeps uh, dementia away, I guess you'd say. But <laughs> that's anyway, great. That's, that's a, a great thing. Okay. And um, one of the others is you want to do move. Yeah. Move. Mm -hmm. Move is the most important thing. It ends up when you exercise and stress a muscle you actually release a, you turn on a gene that puts a hormone to the brain ah. that increases your memory center. So, so it's it, not just your your. It's not just your cardiovascular body, system. The, yeah. mm -hmm. It actually um, turns on a gene. In so that's one of the, the basic five principles we uh, get to. You are a genetic engineer. Yeah. So whether you know it or not, we used to think just exercise was good yes. for the cardiovascular yeah. system. What ends up, that it turns on a gene mm -hmm. when you stress the muscle that makes a small protein that goes to your brain and increases yeah. the size of your hippocampus, you know, which is your memory center. These are so doable. Everything that you have here is so right. doable. And that's really what your book is about, the Great Age Reboot. So, you know, if you don't do all of them, at least do some of them. You know, what are some of the other steps that we can do right now? So, and is it ever too late to start? So my favorite <laughs> five things are, first is, change your attitude because mm. you are a genetic engineer yes. and it's yep. pretty simple you it's not only that you're doing things that that help your physiology but they turn on some genes or turn off other genes so change your attitude mm. really important you are a genetic engineer the second one is only eat food you love and that loves you back mm. so food is like a marriage 
you wouldn't marry someone who's trying to kill you every day. You should. <laughs> you shouldn't eat food that's trying to kill you every day. You can buy you, fried chicken. You may love. You may love French fries, but they're trying to yes. kill you, right? Yes. So on the other hand, avocados, coffee, mm. blueberries, salmon. Those are things that Plenty are really of healthy. Options. Yes. Plenty of so options. So you want it. the third. The the third one is. Um, None of us would do a colonoscopy on ourselves. That yeah. is no physician yeah. I know. And so you need a team, and that team, you need a team that involves a dermatologist, you need a team that involves someone mm -hmm. looking at finances as well, maybe even a spiritual yeah. part of the team yes, as well. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And the next one is add speed to your body and brain. So when you do jump rope, one, it's great cardiovascular system, mm -hmm. but two, it's also great because you're doing something intense that's turning on yeah. those genes in a very short period of time. Well, it turns out for brain games, crossword puzzles are okay and, and executive function, but the thing that really improves and decre improves brain functioning and decreases dementia, decreases cognitive dysfunction over time is what we call speed of processing games. So, you have to do it in so much time. Right, so on our app that we have that accompanies the book, we have a speed of processing, group of speed of processing games embedded because what you have to do is do two things quickly. Yes. And by doing two things quickly, your brain actually, yeah. hippocampus, gets bigger. Right. Um, and we're, we're out of time, but I want to I wanna mention the last one is... Posse and purpose. Yeah. Most important things for managing stress are having friends and a purpose in life. There so, you go. Thank you for letting me share mine. Yes, and I want to just reach across you here and show the book because it's filled with rich info that, you know, we've touched the surface here, but you need to read all of this. It's for all of us. The book is called The Great Age Reboot. It's available wherever books are sold. Thank you. Always a thank treat you. to have you oh, here. Oh, my treat. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Gordon, over to you. Broken lips. That was the nickname that children used to taunt a baby born in Cambodia. Her mother feared her newborn would suffer that kind of cruelty as soon as she laid eyes on her, and her worst fears came true. Baby Chantria was born with a cleft palate. After Chantria was born, I cried. I felt so heartbroken. I never thought something like this could happen to us. I was so sad. I love her and worry about her. I want her to go to school with me and my sister. Chantria's sister was concerned because kids were already starting to make fun of her baby sister. When I took my baby sister for a walk, the children called her broken lips. I got mad and brought my sister back home. When he could find work, Chantria's dad worked in construction in Cambodia where they lived. There was no way they could afford to pay for surgery. So Operation Blessing arranged for the family to travel to a city hospital. There, we paid for Chantry to receive free surgery to repair her cleft lip. Other children came to play with her now. She can eat rice and porridge, and she is now gaining weight. I am really thankful for what you did. Thank you for fixing my sister's lips. That that thank you goes all the way from Cambodia to your home. If you're a member of the 700 Club, because a portion of every gift you give goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people around the world. Those special surgeries are just one of the things that Operation Blessing does. We provide fresh drinking water, we provide livelihood programs, we provide food, we provide disaster relief, and we do it all in your name when you're a member. If you're not a member, I encourage you to join. Join with everything we're doing around the world. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. If you are a member, I encourage you to increase. Think about going to 700 Club Gold, which is $40 a month, or 1,000 Club. That's $1,000 a year. That's $84 a month. Whatever level, when you call and join, I've got something for you. I want you to have it. It's called The Lord is My Shepherd. It's a teaching on the 23rd Psalm. It'll bring you encouragement and comfort. Uh, we all need that. We all need to really recognize Jesus can be the, the Lord of your life and the shepherd of your soul, and he will restore your soul if you just let him. 
Let him lead you beside the still waters. Let him make you lie down in green pastures. He, he is able and willing to do that for you every day. This teaching will walk you through the steps of the 23rd Psalm. It's yours when you join. 1-800-700-7000. Russia is set to annex parts of Ukraine. Moscow announcing that it will incorporate four regions occupied by Russian troops. The Kremlin claiming the recent referendums held in those territories justify the action. The European Union and the U.S. call those votes a sham. The EU president dismissing Russia's move as unacceptable. Meanwhile, the U.S. is encouraging all Americans to leave Russia out of concern that those with dual citizenship could be called up to fight in the war. A Christian leader who made his life's work helping ministries operate with financial integrity has died. Dan Busby, who led the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability for 12 years, passed at the age of 81. Busby spurred the ECFA to achieve its mission of helping nonprofit ministries self-regulate their finances, raising the organization's standards by pushing for external audits and stressing the importance of independent boards. Under his leadership, the ECFA nearly doubled, reaching 2,400 members. He was named one of the top 50 nonprofit leaders six times. And Busby once said, I believe scripture makes it clear that Christians should set an example of utmost integrity in and out of the marketplace. He certainly leaves a big legacy. Gordon? He leaves a huge legacy, and Dan Busby is going to be absolutely missed. What a great man of God who dedicated his life to bringing integrity to the, to the finances of churches, of ministries back to the, to the church to say, yes, we need to have a gold standard. And the ECFA is the gold standard. CBN has been proud to be a member for decades. We mourn the passing of Dan, but we also congratulate him for a life well lived. He is leaving a legacy that we are all enjoying. Uh, I thank God for him and for his life. And our hearts and our prayers uh, are with his family. It's a, it's a huge loss for the Christian community, but at the same time, a huge legacy. And he will be honored and remembered for years. Complications from diabetes sent Shaniqua to the hospital. Pneumonia from COVID kept her there. While her doctors feared for her life, her family prayed for a miracle. I have autoimmune diabetes, and my blood sugar was high, and I couldn't get it down. On Sunday, November 22, 2020, Shaniqua Dees began having problems with comprehension. I was sending texts to my um, medical director that I worked with, and also a coworker that works in Dallas, asking why did I have to work on Sunday, and what presentation was I supposed to give? And both of them were like, you don't work on Sunday and there's no presentation. Mary, Shaniqua's mother, also noticed something was off about her behavior. I took her to the, to the um, community hospital right down the street from us. When she went in, her um, glucose level was 531. Shaniqua was diagnosed with diabetic ketoacidosis, a life-threatening complication of diabetes that can cause mental confusion. She also tested positive for COVID-19. She was transferred to the University of Kansas Medical Center and placed in ICU, where she remained for six days. With her blood glucose now under control, she showed signs of improvement and was moved to a regular unit. However, Shaniqua began having trouble breathing. Pneumonia had begun to set in. I started having some problems and I couldn't, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't catch my breath. At first, Shaniqua was placed on a ventilator. However, it was not raising her oxygen level enough. I knew at that point that, that she was you know, severely ill with this. I knew that she was getting surgery at, at one point um, to get a tracheostomy, which is where they move the breathing tube from the mouth and put it directly into your windpipe through your neck, and that she was going to need a feeding tube. And so we, I knew that she was going to have, you know, a long-term recovery at that point. I never wanted to tell uh, Mary how scared I was. 
because I was worried we were going to lose my friend because I didn't want her to lose that hope. Um, but I was really scared for a while. The procedure left Shaniqua heavily sedated. Mary and her husband Lucian, Shaniqua's father, began to pray. They are also faithful viewers of the 700 Club. Mary sent in a prayer request to CBN for Shaniqua, and someone from the prayer center called her back. And when she called, she prayed with us, and she said, Jeremiah 33, 6, Behold, God will bring health and healing to Shaniqua, and God will heal Shaniqua, and God will reveal to Shaniqua an abundance of peace and truth. Shaniqua was intubated for two weeks. Her doctor's prognosis wasn't good. Still, Mary and Lucian continued to pray and believe. We, we continued to, to just be um, steadfast, unshakable, immovable, and holding on to his unchanging hands. This God would lay different um, people on my heart, I would just reach out and ask them to pray. After four weeks, Mary was allowed to visit the still unconscious Shaniqua. And on December 24th, Mary and Lucian got the answer to their many prayers. The nurse, she came running toward me. And then she goes, she's awake, she's awake, she woke up. And that was Christmas Eve. Soon, Shaniqua began breathing on her own and was taken off of the ventilator. Shortly after, she was sent to rehab where she relearned how to walk, talk, and write. And after just three weeks of physical therapy, Shaniqua was able to walk out of rehab on her own. She and her parents know that it is because of God's faithfulness that she is alive today. I know that prayer works, and I know that God won't, won't leave you. I'm just, I just am so incredibly proud of her for, for how far she has come and how far she continues to, uh, to move. I believe that, um, that God is, he is a healer. He is Yahweh Rapha, just like he said he is. And I believe that no matter how, how big or how small your illness or malady is, God cares about us. I feel so blessed that God spared our daughter's life. God wants to heal, and that's his will. His will is so clearly seen in heaven. There's nobody sick there. He wants healing for his children. He wants salvation for them. He wants life for them. He wants deliverance for, th for them. He wants all of these things. What a wonderful verse to get from Jeremiah 33, 6. Let's look at that. Let's look at Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you. So there's the promise he will answer prayer. And then the fulfillment of that in, in 33, 6, I will bring healing. I will bring health. I will bring an abundance of peace. Isn't that wonderful? These are wonderful promises of God. These promises are yes and amen for all who are in Christ Jesus. That's wonderful too. You can find a promise in the Bible and you can say, that's for me. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. You can get them all. You are a joint heir with him. You can get them all. Now, what does it take to get them? Well, the same thing you just saw in the piece. They prayed. They asked for it. Call to me, and I will answer you. Isn't that wonderful? We have a God who responds to our prayers. So let's come to him. Let's come to him with thanksgiving for what he's about to do. And when we have that, he inhabits the praises of his people. Terry and I are going to pray for you. Before we pray, we've got some other miracles that have happened. We're going to read those reports. Here's Sharon, who sent this in by email, saying, I turned on the TV. The channel was on the 700 Club, which is just amazing. She wasn't even <laughs> intending to watch the program. Terry was praying for someone with problems in their feet. A constant pain, aching and burning. I thought, that is me. I had been praying, that's the key, I had been praying for relief. 
Terry finished. God's healing that condition. You will know right away because it's going to be gone. From that day on, I have not had the pain in my feet. I thank wow. you for your prayers mm. and my healing. That's wonderful. Yeah. I love these because Karen, who lives in La Puente, California, was watching a pre-recorded 700 Club. You know, God is not trapped in time like we are. She started to pray with you on that pre-recorded show, and she was praying that you would say left knee. And in the next moment, you said... There's someone who's having excruciating pain on the left knee, which feels like daggers throughout. God is healing you now. Lay hands on it, and you'll begin to feel heat and coolness at the same time. As soon as you said that, Karen knew her left knee was being healed. She started bending her knee. When she touched it, there was heat and coolness. She stood up and started praising the Lord. Hallelujah. I love these answers to prayer. Miracles that happen today. Let's believe now, let's pray, and let God do what he's promised to do. Lord, we ask you, we come to you, we come to you thanking for you for who you are, what you have done, how you've provided for us. And Lord, we ask now that you send an abundance of peace, that you would send healing, you would send forgiveness, you would send salvation, you would send deliverance. Heal us, Lord, Lord God, and we will be healed. We thank you for it. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone, you're on a, a transplant list for liver. Your liver is, is um, um, just not working anymore, and, and you're on that list. God's able to give you a new liver right where you are right now. Let his presence just come into your body. Let your, his glory shine upon you right now. And regenerate those cells. Let everything be brand new, mm -hmm. disease-free. And all of that infection, all of the virus that caused it, all of it be gone now in Jesus' name. Terry? Someone, you have issues with your tongue. I, I really don't know what it is. I, I don't think it's cancer, but you have some other recurring problems. It affects your ability to eat correctly. It affects your speech. God's healing that condition for you right now. Just lift your hands before him and begin to praise him. He has given you an answer to your prayers. Um, there's someone you've got uh, stress headaches that come from uh, the bridge of your nose, and there's some kind of fracture that has um, misaligned things. And it's, it's, you know it, I'm talking to you because, yes, that happened to you. In Jesus' name, you're healed. Let the bones come into proper alignment. Let there be proper function there. No more headaches. All of that just, just left you right now. No more pain. No more discomfort. In Jesus' name. And speaking of pain, someone else, you have pain in your hands. It's it's pretty chronic. I mean, there are a lot of things you can't do because of it, gripping things, turning things. God's healing that for you right now. A warmth is just going to come over your, your wrist, your, the palm of your hands, your fingers, as he heals you completely in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone you've had back surgery and rods were placed on either side of your spine. And the rod on the left side causes excruciating pain up into the... Uh, uh, right side of your left shoulder. God is healing. And you just felt that. You just felt everything release in Jesus' name. Be healed. No more pain from that. Yeah. Let everything be normal. Let, let just stand straight and tall because God has healed you. He's restoring you right now mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Yeah, someone else, you have chronic depression. I mean, it's you've tr <laughs> every day mm -hmm. is a dark day, whether the sun is shining or not, but not anymore. God is setting all things in order in your body biologically, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. Just lift your hands up, begin to praise him and receive that. This is your day in Jesus' name. Lord, we come together again, and we ask for America. We ask that you would restore us, that you would heal us. The promise of Jeremiah would be a promise. We appropriate that for America. We call to you, and we know that you will answer us. We know that you can heal us and heal our land yes. and bring an abundance of peace. 
Restore us, Lord God. Bring peace to us. Heal our division, Lord God, that we may serve you with our whole heart. Do it, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Well, we have an email question from Kyle today. He says, Gordon, I've been vaccinated and boosted for the current COVID-19 virus. However, I've heard there's a new vaccine to tar target the Omicron virus. My mom is against me getting the vaccine. Any advice on how to handle this situation? Well, Kyle, you're not telling me. What's wow, I, assume, I assume you're an adult. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I assume as an adult, you have the authority to grant consent for medical treatment on your own. If you're in your 20s, uh, and I assume you're male, uh, then there is a risk uh, from the vaccination for uh, some heart problems. And, and that's a very real thing. Given that you've already had two vaccinations, and it doesn't sound like, uh, again, I don't have the details. Did you have any uh, thing happen with your cardiovascular system after that vaccination? Um, you could be one of the fortunate ones that there's no side effects. So uh, you have the authority to make your own decisions. And so make the decision. Mm -hmm. This is Jennifer who says, I watch the 700 Club daily and I'm also a devout Catholic. When I try to tell people about my faith, they get angry and defensive about their own faith. I love the rich traditions and symbolism of the Catholic Church, but some family members act disgusted with me. When it comes to Catholicism versus Christianity, is there really that much difference? Please help. Oh, I hope this is a news flash for you, Jennifer, but Catholics are Christian. Uh, yeah. The Pope's a Christian. Uh, you know, we, we agree that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We come into agreement. Now, are there theological differences between Protestants and Catholics? The answer is yes. Uh, you look at the Catholic Catechism and, you know, it's just a couple of decades. It's been translated to English. Uh, when I read through it, I thought, this is wonderful. This is great. Then I got to the chapter about Mary and noticed, well, there aren't any scriptural references. So, you know, there are things that as a Protestant, I disagree with. But at the same time, when I see a Catholic, you're a Christian and you're, you're part of the fellowship. My dad used to joke, when we all get to heaven, we'll, we'll know the Baptists were right. It's total immersion. Uh, and that's the only way. Here's a word from Psalms. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord.